Hi, it's Trixie Mattel doing a super secret celebrity makeover. Okay, so we're starting a new series on this channel where we have some fabulous celebrities on the channel for makeovers. We have a wonderful guest and I don't know who it is. My lovely assistant, Brandon, has booked them. So I'm gonna close my eyes. They're gonna get in the chair. They're gonna snap the snapper and we're gonna find out who it is. I hate surprises. But I mean, the whole point of this is surprises. Oh. oh God, I think my tights are ripped too. <laughs> I think there's a person in the chair, Brandon. All right, this is a super celebrity makeover with... Oh my God. <laughs> Oh my God, it's Margaret Cho. We forgot to say who it hi, is. Hi, hi, hi. I love this hair. This is very like short for you. It's short for me. It's big bunny energy. Yeah, it's it's like, um, it's giving me like Wigstock 98. Yeah, it's, uh you know, bunny DJing last day of World Pride. <laughs> the wig put on backwards. <laughs> you know, I think we're gonna, Brandy, can you get some a pillow for her? Of course. Can we get this this woman some hype? Yes. Oh, that definitely helps. Oh, and oh, who's your dog? This is Lucia Caterina. She's been to your shows, and she's a big fan. Oh my gosh. So what are we doing today? I was thinking, um, actually it's a very Y2K um, Gangoro girl. Look in so, the door, you have the reference photos. Oh, reference photos. The Gangoro girl is like, um, it's it's 90s Paris oh. Hilton inspired. Oh, wow. So it's like a Japanese subculture and it's um, hyper California mm -hmm. and also kind of fluorescent. Correct me if I'm wrong, isn't it sort of like a style that it's like Japan doing a cartoon of California, right? right? There's some research to them. Oh. Y2K style. I'm supposed to read this. If Look at this handwriting. Why, why do you pay style? This is written by a psychologically disturbed fruit fly. All right. It's um, very hostage ransom note <laughs> style. Please help. <laughs> Y2K makeup, late 90s, 2000s. Lighthearted fun, color, cute details, playful texture, shiny aesthetic. It is California by way of Osaka. Right. It's sort of like it got lost, like a game of telephone. Yes. Somebody told someone in this country who told someone in this country that everyone's tan there. Yes. And, and they were like, oh. But where the sun not, not necessarily hits them. The weird tan. Oh, the highlight. The, the highlight, the strange highlight, and the white lip, it's just really jarring. Jizz. But it, it's jizzy, but jazzy. So it's not exactly. It's snowballing. It's snowballing. It's like Passing you're felching. <laughs> you're giving me that viral load. <laughs> and you're passing it. <laughs> There's some variants along the way. Well, <laughs> let's get into it. I'm gonna grab some product and uh, I think we can get into this. Okay, let's do it. What is your relationship with makeup as a performer? Um, I do like makeup on stage because I think it really um, is important. It helps to kind of give yourself that feeling of like, oh yes, I am performing. <laughs> yeah, it sort of turns you into the performer that you don't feel like you are until yeah. it's like happening. What special was it, the one where you had a wig on for some of it? Oh, Revolution, yeah. And then there's a wig reveal. The, I love uh, I love a good wig reveal. Well, nothing so makes you feel it. more like a new person than a wig. Yeah. Trip. Oh, my liner, oh, thank you. Left eye. Left eye. Lopez. Lopez, yeah. I, pre Ooh, I saw her. Um, a couple weeks before she died at Real Food Daily, talking on a flip phone, real loud, mad, by herself, yelling about somebody. And I love her so much, and I was like, I want to talk to her so bad, but then I didn't. I will, I'll have another chance, and then she did. <gasps> so, moral of the story is... Talk to people when you want. When you... And if you see Margaret out, you're next. <laughs> That's, that's what I got for this story. That's, oh, ominous. You're like, I always see someone and then they mysteriously disappear. Hmm. <laughs> I'll say hi to a celebrity, but I never know who anyone is, A. And B, if it's somebody I really love, I can't say hi because I can't trust yeah. myself to be normal. I've met Amanda Lepore probably Ooh, 10 times. I love her. And every time I am like a 16 year old girl at a meet and greet at a at Atomic Records, I'm like, Hi, Amanda, uh, can you sign this? Last time I saw her was backstage at a show pre-COVID, 
and her book had just come out and I brought her book backstage to get signed. And I was like, remember the part in the book where you were being abused by your husband and you had to escape, so you told me you were taking a bath and you packed a suitcase and jumped out the window and went to a taxi and said, I'm escaping. You said, I'm escaping to New York. And she goes, yeah, I had to get out of there. <laughs> But Amanda's great because she always delivers the celebrity story you want. Yeah. Like yeah. one time, um, my old manager was her manager, and there was a voicemail on the phone that said, Hey, Diana, it's Amanda. I just woke up. I'm going to take a nap. <laughs> Is there any celebs that you've met that really delivered where you're like, that's the so-and-so story I wanted? Um, I did a, a, a pilot with Yoon Yoo Jung. She won the Oscar for Minari. And she um, was trying to make sure, like, uh, that she could finish shooting this other movie. So she had them dye just the front of her hair <laughs> and then leave the back for the reshoots for the other movie. Deranged. I love a sickening, obvious reshoot. Re like, uh, there's that part in Legally Blonde right at the end where she's just in a wig. You see her blonde hair the whole movie, and then you basically at the end see her in a bachelorette party hard front wig, and you're like, I mean, it must be weird for you because you were working with drag queens before it was cool. Well, I grew up in drag. I grew up like in the 70s with the Empress of San Francisco pageants and all of that in San Francisco before AIDS. So it was a very different And you showed up time. right before it, interesting. Just like you saw Left Eye a week before she died. Interesting. You're in San Francisco starting AIDS. Interesting. Perfect. I remember when I worked in P-Town my first few summers, I would hear stories of you coming and doing like the, what's that weekly show there with Ryan? Oh, Showgirls, yeah. Showgirls, yes. Showgirls. And they talked about you singing Totally Shit When I Fart. It's, um, because <laughs> Ryan would br break a, a Maybelline brown, like a sable eyeshadow in his <laughs> underpants before we go on stage, so it was every time, and then he would take off his underwear, and then his hole would be powdered with sable <laughs> Maybelline shadow, and I would just die, like die, every time, even though I knew it was coming. Is it like a brown? Isn't yeah. that a MAC color? Oh, sable, soba, that's a MAC color. You know what's sad, we're doing Gang Girl, but I think celebrities wear makeup like this now, right? <laughs> like this yeah. highlight does not it's, look too wild. It's kind of an influencer. You look like a 13-year-old TikTok dancer. Like, you're about to be like, do you like TikTok? I am obsessed with TikTok, but I can't really understand it, so I watch TikTok videos on YouTube, so that's how old I am. <laughs> you will refuse to participate, you will participate, but only on your own terms and on a platform you understand. Yeah, I always get, uh, on my home. You do? <laughs> I, which I love, I love, uh. Do you really? Yeah, and I love your reactions to <laughs> Oh, when we watch those Netflix shows? I can't believe the things they let us say. Wash, wash your vagina. I'm here to wash your vagina. I drive by that hospital. I had kidney failure and um, I had uh, to get my, uh, I, had, I had to get the surgery like emergency thing and before they did it, this lady came in and she's like, hey, my name is Gwen. I'm here to wash your vagina. But she said wash. Like not wash, but wash, which I think is an accent of. Was this the kidney failure when you were on that extreme diet? Yeah, so wash. You know what I just watched was The Queen, that old documentary. Oh, I hadn't, that is so funny. I'm a bad drag queen. I hadn't seen it until two weeks ago. Isn't it beautiful? It was crazy. I didn't realize how much older than Paris is Burning it was. It's 1968. Crazy. Do you know how dedicated you had to be Life. to be a drag queen in 1968? And all, yeah, all of the homophobia and sort of like the, the of the time is encased within it, but they're still doing it. Yeah. You know? A lot of homophobia. And that was so just me much. watching it. I was watching, like, fag, you know, <laughs> men from the 60s. <laughs> hey, God, fag. make Adam and Steve. <laughs> These people were buying like their mom's secondhand wigs. Yeah. Working their real hairline. You better hope you had hair as a third year old yeah. because you needed it. Oh yeah, Albaline, which I still use that makeup remover. Oh, Albaline is great. It is. Did you know that people used to use that as lube for gay sex? Oh, I can see that. Because when you they go to like- They your family store. Did they have that in your family yeah, store? Yeah, they did. I mean, it, it, it liquefies, so it's perfect. When you go to the sex <sighs> stores, like even in P-Town, when you go to that sex store, there's Albaline. And one day I said, why do you have this? And he said, well, it's a lot of the older men have just been using this for that long, so and I was like, They're just oh. used to it. You remember her family had a, a video store. A gay book, yeah, a gay bookstore. But we had like Honcho and Blue Boy and Drummer magazine. 
and Meat Men and all of those like old school um, gay porno magazines and also like the Charles Atlas uh, catalogs. You know, I think I'm starting to believe this makeup. I love it. I'm starting to believe it. So you, a human woman, getting ready to, let's say, go out to dinner. What's the beauty reg? What's the vibe? Uh, well, my beauty regimen daily is I use my zip and my new face. And I like to put on a foundation with the, what is that, like, it's usually like a cleaning head, but I, I oh. use instant. Poppers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, a Clarisonic? A Clarisonic, yeah. Wait a minute, you put foundation on with a Clarisonic? Yeah, because it has a foundation head. It does? Mm -hmm. So you can put it on fast. Wow. I actually love that. You just switch out the head to, to clean. I bet you do. Have you so, been like on the road? No, you can't. No, really. I have my first, I'm doing a little stand-up gig tonight. It's my first time doing it Ooh. since before COVID. I know. Are you going back on the road? Yes. Um, so I'm doing this movie on Fire Island, and then after that I'll go and I'll start doing my um, U.S. dates, and then we'll see uh, uh, what's happening internationally. I mean, who knows? But I've been doing shows, and I've been doing shows for like two months, and it's it's really fun. It, I like I I forgot how much I love doing shows and how much it's a big part of my life. But I got used to not doing it. That's the thing, Katya and I were like. I don't like, you would think we like desperately miss touring and sometimes I'm like, oh, staying home is fierce. You were there before my first taping and yes. you said, don't be scared because the audience can tell. Yeah. Which is a great way to keep someone from being scared, by the way, <laughs> a threat. Yeah, it was I such a great show. This one was also present. Lucia came, yes, she loved it. When they said we're doing a movie about gay people on Fire Island, did you say, I've been studying this character? I am this character, I've been living this life. <laughs> I am more of a P-Town energy. I love it. Tweaking with Twinks in the Woods wasn't exactly my fantasy, but also I got put up in a place that had no uh, door didn't lock and there was no towels and no sheets on the bed. Because, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you know, God forbid somebody gay sleeps on Fire Island. It was horrible. And then I got picked up for my gig by um, a little person driving a forklift. And I wrote. Right, there's no cars, that's right. Yeah. So I'm on a forklift in drag, and the, the, my friend Joey, his little person driving it, and between me and him, Mama, Barnum and Bailey, we were serving the only circus illusion. And then I performed at that, um, I don't know, it's like a big wooden room, like a big the dance Ice Palace. Hall. Yes. yes. But it was a little like P Town where it was like, I love it. Choose your own adventure. Do you, you want to duck? Do you want to explain to what the audience what that is? Duck is, um, it's a pier that is unused mostly except for men um, having sex. And um, usually it's like Spiritus Pizza first because Spiritus Pizza closes, I think, at one in the morning. And if you never got at the tea dance or at the club or whatever, at, there's a everything must go sale of <laughs> at Spiritus Pizza at 1 a.m. every night. The Pret Abbey. And then after that, everybody goes to the uh, Dick Dock. Which, by the way, if you haven't been f after going to like three parties that day, take the hint. It's you. Yeah. Go switch your, go get bangs, go switch it up, you know? Lady Bunny goes down there with a flashlight and she goes, I'm looking for my earring. <laughs> it just like flashes those poor people while they're like sucking f Look up. I wish I had kept a diary for my entire life, but. I know. I always feel so exposed when real comedians are like, I always record my sets and I'm like, I always that day, I'm like, I'm gonna do this. And then I don't record a fucking thing. And I forget all of it. Yeah, I often on record. I remember you told me this incredible story about bombing in Dublin. Oh, in Edinburgh, yes. Oh, Can it you was tell so, them about that? Oh, I bombed so bad and they were so mad at me. And the problem <laughs> with bombing is like, sometimes I won't leave. Like I'll just keep, like, it's like, I don't care if you don't like me, I'm gonna make you hate me and then I won't get off stage and they were gonna kill me. And it was so embarrassing because um, Amanda Palmer and Neil Gaiman were there and they wanted me to uh, get in a car. They actually got me a horse-drawn carriage because they felt so bad at two in the morning to get me home. <laughs> I think about that all the time whenever I had like a, not great night. I'm like, well, Margaret told me she had to be basically swaddled like a child and thrown into a petty <laughs> So It's really not bad. But it's like, you know, it's kind of a funny idea of like, why is this the worst thing? People think this is the worst thing that can happen. It's actually really not that bad. My family love it now. They were really like confused by comedy because they didn't understand what it was, but now they're really into it. But I was successful early enough where 
they uh, couldn't um, be upset about my choices. They couldn't really dispute it, especially since you had that big boom so early on. Yeah, so now they're like so into show business. They have like set their SAG AFTRA. <laughs> they love show business so much. They always ask me if they could be in stuff. We are gonna be the can be extra. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Sorry, we're just blotting out your lips. Does this feel okay? Mm-hmm. Damn, you really are a whore. I just popped this lash on you and you didn't blink or nothing. <laughs> it's so good. This it's also kind of like Chinese opera. Oh, it's yeah, it's a little bit that for sure. And I didn't really appreciate white frosty eyeshadows when they were popular, but now. I love it. Like a 90s, um, like a Pam Anderson shimmery brow oh, bone. I love. With like a matte gray eye. I Ugh. love though. Yeah, now it's so. So hot. I love like an Ultima 2 Nakeds kind of like, you know, not Urban Decay Nakeds, Ultima 2 Nakeds. Like Ultima 2 are like prescriptives, kind of like weird 90s mall makeup. Mall makeup. I mean, there's something so hot about uh, People who have a job where they have to put on an absurd amount of makeup and they're not on stage. Yeah. <laughs> this is Matchmaster. This is what I used to use on brides, this foundation. So, I mean, we're doing this white frosty lip. I'm, it's kind of gross, but we're just gonna I do it. I love it, okay. do it. And then we're gonna do that white line down the nose. Yeah, do it. Which is so gross, but. It's the look. I mean, that's what it looks like. It is jizz. I love it. It's jizz. I love it. I didn't expect it to be actually kind of fierce. It's totally fierce. If anything, I think I probably could have gone more clowny, but oh yeah, this is gonna give me what I need. This nose is gross. This is a gross nose. <laughs> actually, it looks like mine. <laughs> it's so realistic that she actually can't breathe now. <laughs> it's, like too it's very Latoya. It's really Latoya. It's Latoya on World's Worst, World's Worst Cook, that show she won. Oh. Worst, Worst Cook Celebrity Edition. She won it. I don't mean to make this too serious a question, but being a, a queer and Asian icon for so long, do you think it's changed from when you started to now? Oh, it's changed so much to be should, queer and to be Asian. It's been so, it's so, it's so great to see all of the different opportunities for gay people and for Asians and for just all of us. It's really, I mean, because we're just better. I mean, it's not crazy. I don't mean it like that, but seeing Bowen's nom this year was oh, like the best. For, I wanted to win. For a new SNL. It's incredible. How did I love you feel? Him. How did you feel with your nom? I was so excited when I got nominated, and I think it's just really like great to be acknowledged by your own industry. You know, there's a lot of great um, excitement around that. You know, and it, it's it's so feels fulfilling. I hope Bowen wins. I think he should. He's so good on SNL. So good. I'm so, that Titanic character. So good. So good. You hit me. You want to do this? Let's do this. Bitch. <laughs> so good. So good. Do you want some water? Just I'm sitting here for. Thank you. Damn near two hours. I'm just gonna get a setting spray, and I think we're almost done. Except I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna put more blush on you. Is your pod still on? Yes. My, uh, did you do it through COVID and everything? I did um, a special season where we uh, did crimes against Asian Americans. It's very scary. So this, there were so many things happening and every day there was a new criminal event. And, and then the guy from Atlanta just got um, sentenced for not, it was not a hate crime. Wow. Which is like, it's a hate crime. Why do we have to fight to be hated? Don't ever let yourself get too excited about the human race. No. That's the sad part. But we can't get excited about this orange blush. Isn't this beautiful? Hello Kitty, color pop. I love orange blush. I really should be using my own product, but I always, I mean, we make makeup and we have tons of blush palettes, but I'm such a makeup junkie that on the channel I end up using everyone else's because I know what my shit does. I'm always trying to see what else is going on, you know? But this is a, a really interesting color because it is like the orange red from the crayon. Yeah, it's pretty, right? It's really... It's hibiscus. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's... <gasps> ha ha! Oh, work, bitch. Is it balancing? Yes. <laughs> oh. 
Oh Word. God, I love it. I love it too. It's very uh, grand, a grand marshal of the pride parade. <laughs> which I'm it's sure you It's also kind done. of Mama Cass. I don't know. It's so good. And that's a finished look. Yay! Yay! Thank you, Margaret, for coming and. <laughs> Thank you. If you guys liked this video, please, uh, in the comments, I guess, why don't you nominate anybody else you want to see? This was yes, really fun. Yes, it was so fun. Thank you. Oh, goodbye. Bye.